Hey ladies, so today I'm going to be talking to you about the thing that nobody is telling you about why you're actually not making the kind of money that you want to make in your life. Um, there are these truths that you need to know and you know that I'm all about this one important question, which is, are you more committed to your bullshit? Are you more committed to the vision of what you want your life to really look like? So with that, let's get started and make sure you stay to the end because I'm going to tell you the three things you can do to start to sort of be the antidote to the reason why you're not making money. So make sure you stay till the end. Okay. So here's the thing. People are not making enough money because if you have your own business, uh, whether you're a coach or a consultant or you have a small business, from talking to so many people um, and I'm like, so what are you charging? What are your prices? And uh, you're not charging enough. Um, and I see people charging what they feel like they can sell. Uh, like if they charge less, then it'll be easier to sell. And so they go for the low ticket items or they're doing consulting or something that is the value of their time and they sell it at a price which they think is going to be easier, which is usually really undervaluing themselves. So that's one reason why you're not making money is because you are charging what you think will be easier to sell. And what I want you to know just right off the bat, having done this for 15 years, starting off as a nursery school teacher, um, creating a business from scratch to making over $2 million a year as a small business owner, um, selling a service, which was myself and my process, um, that one thing can change everything, right? Because when you cop out and you find the easy way out by just selling what you think is going to be easier, not only is it often not easier, um, but then when you do get the work and you start to deliver and you're working so hard and you still can't pay your bills um, and everything sort of gets depleted and then there you are still working your ass off, um, it doesn't feel good. And the other thing, and I'm going to be really honest, is Sometimes the kind of clients that you have who are willing to or can only pay a certain amount or feel like they got a deal may or may not be the ideal client for you. They may be entitled or they might not do the work in the way that you really want them to do or use the product or service to the fullest. And I've tried this in my business where I was like in those moments where I was like, oh my God, oh my God. You know, I got to, I got to, I got to make money, right? And then you sell something or I would sell something, number one, that I didn't love, but I just felt like, well, maybe more people will buy it and I would sell it and the people wouldn't do the work and they wouldn't get the transformation. So pricing something lower, not only undermines your own value, but you don't love the work and you also can get clients or customers that you don't really enjoy working with. Um, the other reason why you don't make money is because you don't own your own value. Um, and that's another huge thing. Um, you feel like you're an imposter. You feel like uh, you don't have the right credentials or you haven't been doing it long enough or you're not old enough or you don't have the wisdom or you don't work in that exact industry or you never worked in that exact industry. Um, Someone told you that you were charging too much or that asked you, well, like, how are you qualified to do this? And it activated all your self-doubt. And so you're just not holding your own value and what your time and your expertise is worth. And so when you doubt yourself, when you feel like you're not enough, uh, you don't have that confidence, then you're going to charge less. And you're not going to go for those bigger clients, those bigger offers. Um, if you're in an organization and you want a promotion or you want to go for a job with more responsibility, if you don't feel like you're qualified or you have the credential to do that, and it's a fact you don't need that credential to do that job or to offer that service, then that is a way in which your own beliefs about yourself 
completely holding you back. Um, I want to tell you a little bit of story about this because I got this trucker hat at a farmer's market. I'm really feeling trucker hats right now. Um, so I was a nursery school teacher. So I started my business in about 2008 or nine. And, um, I was a nursery school teacher. Uh, I had zero business expertise or experience. I was working three jobs. I was teaching nursery school. I was facilitating book clubs for kids because I was a teacher. I'd gone back to school to get my degree as a um, master's in education. And then I was working at a gym teaching spinning classes, right? Because I'd gotten divorced and um, my ex-husband was very, very successful. And really, I felt like with the alimony that I got, I couldn't support myself and really support my kids in this lifestyle that, to be honest, was even close to being equal with their dad. And so there was a whole lot of stuff going on there for me, right? But the bottom line is I was piecing together, working really hard, trying to create this lifestyle that I had for myself and my kids. And um, I mean, I remember I got $250 to facilitate a book club for like two hours. And I remember thinking, like, wow, this is amazing, right? I, I'm doing this two hours of work and I'm getting $250. And it was a lot and it was great. But in the end, right, like this wasn't what I was really meant to do. And so when I figured out that my purpose was to be a coach and I went to coach training, um, I will never forget this time where we were sitting in class uh, and we started to talk about the business of coaching and what people were charging. And a lot of people were charging nothing because they didn't feel that they could until they graduated, um, which is okay, fine, fair. But I was already charging, I already started to get clients and I was charging like $150 an hour for my time. And everyone in my class was like, oh, how can you do that? I mean, you don't have your certification yet. And I felt like I had been, Working on this for so long, I had done a lot of self-study. I had actually been facilitating and coaching and helping people unofficially. And um, I believed in my ability. And guess what? I was getting that, right? I was getting that. And I told my classmates, this is the price that I'm telling people I'm going to get. You get to pay before I get certified. The price is going to go up. So we're going to talk in a minute about how do you get that kind of confidence? But what I want you to understand is that even though I was a nursery school teacher, even though I was still getting the certified, I knew that I had what it takes to support and service and get a transformation for my clients. And so I stepped into what I'm going to teach you in a little bit. And I was able to do that. Um, it happened again in my career, right? So there was other times. So like years later, uh, we had the business and I decided that I wanted to create like a, like a mastermind, like a year long program for, for coaching clients in the dating and love space, which was what I was doing. And, um, I was in a community of dating and love coaches and I had an event and we were charging, uh, people between at the time 10 and like $15,000 to work with us for a year. And people in my industry were like, oh my God, you can't, nobody will pay that because people won't invest in love and dating. They only will invest at a high ticket for a service in which they can get an ROI that's uh, money, right? Like, yeah, I'll invest $10,000 or $50,000 if I know I'm going to make that back. And again, I was like, I don't believe that. That's not true. And we ended up ultimately enrolling people in the dating and love relationship space for $35,000 for a year. Um, and working with me was upward to fifty-five dollars or $65,000 a year, right? And so how did I do that, right? How did I go from like literally zero in the bank to having, I remember, I'll never forget that moment where I was like, wow, in about seven or eight years, I paid off debt and I was able to save a million dollars. I was like, wow, I'm a millionaire, right? Um, how did I do that? Right. And what I want you to understand is that your ability or lack of ability to make money has nothing to do with the quality of leads you're getting. It has nothing to do with the economy. It has nothing to do 
um, with our times or people are burned out on coaching or whatever it is, or, or the clients ha have been burned and so they, they're really hesitant. All that I believe is crap. Um, number one, it's crap because we see people making money all around us um, who are probably younger and less qualified than you. Um, and if you feel guilty, even like, oh, I could never do that, right? Oh, like the spiritual poverty thing. I want you to look at that because again, this is all part of these three things that you need to change. Um, if you believe that it's not spiritual to want money or, or desire money or charge for your innate services, listen, because what I'm going to tell you now, um, are, are the things that you need to shift. Um, so, and this is what I did and this is what I teach my clients to do. Right. Um, and the number one thing that we want to really start looking at is your mindset. And what do I mean by your mindset? Well, I'm a writer, I'm writing a book, right? I, I sold this book to Hay House. And when I was taking writing classes, the way that it was described to me that really resonates for my clients and, and for me is this, is that when you're writing a book, a fiction, a novel, a movie, a script or whatever, you create what they call like the rules of the world, right? Think about um, a fantasy uh, or a science fiction movie that you've watched um, or even a television show and they're in a certain community or there's certain truths that happen in this uh, culture or in this setting, right? They're the rules of the world. And in order to buy in, we believe that the rules of the world are the truth. And so what I love to share with clients is that, and I had to really understand this myself, was that I created rules for my world right? That supported my vision, my identity, and my dreams, right? So in my world, you could charge whatever you wanted while you were getting coach certified, as long as you could deliver. Um, in my world, people do invest high ticket for love and dating help because in the end, like, what's more important on your deathbed? Like the money you had in the bank or the person who's holding your hand when you die, right? Like, I believed that what I offered was valuable. Um, and so you have to look at what is the world that you have created for yourself. Um, I was talking to someone the other day who's a coach and she had this awareness that in her world, because she hasn't manifested like, you know, X amount of, of, of dollars that she is afraid or self-sabotages so that she's not offering at the value or the price that she's worth, right? Or she's not creating what she wants to create because of her own world that she's built in which she doesn't deserve it or she's not worth it because in her world, you have to achieve X to charge X or to do X, right? And so I want you to really start to think about the rules of the world, because if you live in a world where there's lack, where you have to have a certain amount of credential, you have to have a certain amount of time, I'm inviting you to, to understand that these are excuses and to really get into the deep inner work of what's the unconscious gain from having that world around you, right? What do you get from living in the less than or lack world? And often it goes back to, well, then I don't have to put myself out there. I don't have to ask for money. I don't have to charge more. I don't have to do videos. I don't have to market myself, right? Um, I could just hide and like, getting certified and getting education and uh, selling that little cheap thing because it feels easy. So again, are you committed to your bullshit or are you committed to your vision? But that's number one is what is your mindset and what's the rules of the world that you're living in and how do you change the rules so that you win? Um, number two, the second thing that you have to do that I had to do is your identity has to be aligned 
with the life that you want to create, right? You have to have an identity in which I am abundant now. You have to have an identity in which I am successful. I'm a badass. I'm a great service provider, consulting, coach, realtor, product manager, right? The way that we believe about ourselves and what we want for our future, we have to know that that is true for us right now. And so if you go back to the examples that I gave you in my own story, right? Like I believed I was a great coach, even though I didn't have a certification. I believed the transformation that we offered and that I offered was totally worth 10,000, 15,000, 55,000, whatever it was, right? The identity that I took on, it had to shift from being like a divorcee nursery school teacher to a highly skilled, highly rated performance coach, dating and relationship coach, transformational leader, business owner, CEO, executive, manager, internet marketer, whatever I have to be, that's really the reflection of me at my highest best self, right? We have to have an identity of our capability. We have to have an identity of our capacity and what we can do. So everything that is our potential, we have to bring into our identity now and rewrite that story and start making a line action to create momentum that will create results that will like carry us forward in what I call a momentum tunnel of our true identity, that identity of our success, that identity where we make money. And then finally, when you do that, right, when you start to value yourself, the market, right, the clients, the customers start to value you and the right ones will want to work with the best, right? There is a whole thing of like, I am a person who works with the best. And I know that in order to get that, I have to invest at the highest level. And guess what? Then you start to get those clients that do the work because they're paying the big bucks and they have a lot of like, uh, sweat in the game. And so they want to do well and they actually care. Um, then as the service provider, as the coach, right, it feels really great to work with those people, right? And that same thing is true in an organization, right? When you get paid well, you deliver and people have these expectations of you and you get to work generally with people who respect you because you have this identity that you're a badass, right? Um, and then the third thing is this. The reason why you're not making money often is because you don't even love the offer, what you're selling. It's not mission driven. It's not an aligned to your soul, to your purpose, to your highest self. And so when we're selling things that we don't love or we're selling things that we feel like we have to or should do because other people are selling those things, um, then at an unconscious level, we get in our own way and we don't sell those things and we don't make a lot of money, right? Um, an interesting thing, and I've been thinking about this daily, um, is that when I switched from only doing group programs to going back to working with people at a high touch, high impact way one-on-one, -on -one, uh, when I looked around the marketplace, I was like, oh, people are doing one-on-one, -on -one, but a lot of people are like, putting all those people that you're working with one-on-one -on -one in a community and offering some sort of community opportunity. And so for weeks at the beginning, I was like, oh, should I put these people in a community? Should I put these people in a community? Uh, and I realized like for me, for my lifestyle, for what I want to do right now, that's not something I want to add, right? And I knew that if I started including that, right? Cause it's like, and you get this and you get that, right? trying to create value for my offer by giving them more stuff, um, it's not aligned, right? And so I'm not doing that, right? Because it doesn't feel right for me. So whether it's the promotion that you're going for, the product that you're selling, uh, it has to be aligned and mission driven. And it has to be something that you actually love and want to do. Um, 
I know a lot of coaches who are like, oh, I'm going to do a membership thing, right? Like I'm going to do this membership thing and it's going to be $67 a month. And I'm going to do these videos and I'm going to you know, have a call. And I'm like, okay, so how many people do you need to get in that group for $67 a month to make enough money? And do you love delivering this? Or are you just thinking like, oh yeah, passive income, it'll be so easy. Do you love it? So you have to love your offer. All right, so let me sum it up. The reason you're not making money is a lie. The lie that you're telling yourself. And I've been saying this a lot. The problem you think you have isn't really the problem you have. So it's not about leads. It's not about the market. It's not about the economy. It's not about the state of the industry. It's not about people aren't hiring or paying. All that's crap to me because when you follow these three things, then you are more likely to make more money. And number one is the mindset you have. You have to build a world in which you write the rules and you win. Number two, your identity has to be aligned with a badass, successful, capable person that you really are rather than someone who is full of doubt, someone who doesn't believe in herself, someone who doesn't think she's good enough, someone who thinks she's a fraud or imposter. That will kill your ability to make money. And then finally, you have to have something that you're selling or a, a, a career or a job or a role in an organization that you actually believe in, that you love, right? And when all those three things are lined up, you will start making money because you are acting from a place of your highest self. You are in your mojo, you are in your confidence, you are in your joy. And I've been saying this for a while, but when you are aligned so that your service, the thing you do is your joy and your joy is in the service that you offer, right? Because it just feels so whole and aligned. Like it is an expression of your soul, like Jason Pollock, is that his name? Pollock? on a canvas, right? Like it's your business is an expression of your essential soul, your life, and it all feels aligned and it won, then you will start to make more money. Um, if you would like me to help you with those three things, please give us a follow on Instagram. It's Marnie Batista underscore, or come join me on my Facebook page. It's Marnie Batista. Send me a direct message and uh, let me know how I can help support you in creating that alignment. Because here's the thing. If you want big work and a big life, you have to optimize for success. And that optimizing comes from the inside out. So if you have any questions, leave us a comment, share this with your friends, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.